All right. Welcome to Catholic Scripture Twisters, Episode 9, where we're going to get into the fruit of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, let's get into the scriptures that the Catholics twist up to show their fruit. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. So the context of this are religious leaders. Beware of them. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Right? So let's judge the tree of the Roman Catholic Church to see its fruit. Uh, first, let's look at, look at Jesus. Jesus gave up the glory of heaven. And his life for us. He gave it all up. He came into this world as a man. He lived as a jobless, homeless man. And gave everything to us. He served us. Even you and I. Just bums. The shit of the world. He came and he served us. That's Jesus. He collected money and ties. You could say. But not for himself, but to help out everybody, to take care of everybody. It wasn't just for him and his apostles and disciples. Went around taking care of everybody. And we can see this in Acts chapter 2 and chapter 4, where the church did the same thing. They sold everything. They gave up everything, just like Jesus. But the ties didn't go just to the apostles. It was used for everybody. Whoever had need, they were taken care of. Everybody in the church taken care of. Right? But the church today, not like that at all. The Pope wants the preeminence in the world. When Jesus was tempted by the devil to bow down to him so that he could have the kingdoms of this world, Jesus said, no, worship God alone. Well, the Pope wants that preeminence. Be king over the city-state of the Vatican. To be head of the church. To be decked with all this glory. The complete opposite of Jesus. Yet he claims to be the vicar of Christ. Jesus on earth. Jesus' representation on earth. And he's far from it. Far from it. And you'll get to see why the Catholic Church didn't want anybody having the Bible. Because they would get to see that quite blatantly. I'll get into that momentarily. And if anybody that's a Catholic that needs help, like some medical issues, you know, medical bills, prescriptions, you know, things really necessary to help them, to take care of them, the Catholic Church isn't going to give them money. They're not going to do that at all. What are they going to do? Well, they, they might do something like a, a food drive or some bingo or bake sale of some kind to try to get more money out of the people to use their money to help you. Their supplies to help you. But not the Catholic Church's own, no. That's for the priesthood. And they're above you. you know, you're there to support them. They're not there to support you. Right? They might do some kind of prayer meeting. But let's take a look at what James has to say here. Catholics bring this up all the time, right? Faith without works is dead. Well, granted, the, the Roman Catholic Church does do charity work, right? But there's so much more they could do. Jesus gave up everything. And you imagine... If the Catholic Church gave up everything, how much, much people they could actually help and how much that would actually change the world 
and convert the world by that. But they're not going to do that. Because it's not about that. But Catholics will bring up, you know, faith without works. Can faith save them? But it says here, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you save them, depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not the things which are needful of the body, what doth it profit? What doth it profit? You can find pictures and videos of the Pope going to Africa, acting like he's blessing them with his presence, walking among them as these skinning bone children are crawling, trying to touch him. This is why don't you help them? There's so much that you could do, but you're just going to walk among them as they reach out to you as, as if you're Jesus. Right? And as if they touch you, they're going to be automatically fed and healed. Right? Know them by their fruits. Look at the works. John 15, at verse 18, Jesus says, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, A servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Here we see, the world loves you. Well, chances are, you know, with Jesus. That, well, the world's bringing you in. You've fallen for temptation. It's tricking you, making you feel all comfortable, light of seeing and lukewarm. Right? We see how Jesus was treated, how the apostles were treated, the disciples throughout time were treated. And all of a sudden, the church married the state, Constantine there. And all of a sudden, the bishop of Rome is made head of the church and gave him basically the, the power of the emperor of Rome, merging church and state. And it, the church did exactly what Israel did. They denied Jesus. They didn't want to deal with that persecution. They were afraid of the Romans and being wiped out. So they said, we have no king but Caesar. And they denied Jesus. And we can see that the church did the same thing. All the persecution, they were like, no. Denied Jesus. And then they became married to the world. They committed spiritual adultery. Now the world after that point, really took care of them. Know them by their fruits. Let's take a look at Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, longsuffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Oh, well, we already... Went over how that's not true, right? This last part, crucifying the flesh with the affections and lusts. No, the priests, they want preeminence. They want to be above the people. They want the people's praise and worship, their respect, their adoration. For no reason, just because they're a priest, you know, a bishop, a cardinal, a pope. He's got a, a, a title and some fancy clothes, and that's all you need. And now you're above everybody else, and you get treated special. That's not crucifying the flesh with the affections and lust. That's giving in to the temptation of the devil, wanting to be preeminent than above your fellow man. Complete opposite of Jesus and the apostles, giving up everything, literally everything, 
family, friends, jobs, homes, lands, comfort, security. Gave it all up. Gave it all up for Jesus, for God. That's the fruit of the Spirit right there. That shows faith. Meekness, you don't see that. Especially talking just with regular Catholics. You talk with Catholics, and they have this attitude of, no, 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 you don't question me, you don't teach me. I'm part of the true church. You need to just, you know, shut up, listen to me, and just accept what I'm saying. Don't question it. You know, don't try to dissect it and show how it's wrong or anything like that. No. What are you doing? Shut up and take what I said. Because Catholics, that's how they're taught when they're children. Because children, I've witnessed myself, they have questions. They question the priest and what he's saying. And the parents were like, how dare you? I, you accept his answer. He's a priest. And they really get on him about just obeying what the priest has to say, even though it doesn't make sense. Hey, priest, what's two plus two? Five? Huh? That doesn't make sense, because I got these two apples, and when I put them with these other two apples, I get four. So where do you get this five? And then they get scolded for questioning priests. So they end up getting that same attitude. They think like they're the priests to the non-Catholics, and that when you have a question, you just accept their answer, and you don't question it. And because of their indoctrination, they get confused when you do question it. Like, who are you? Who do you think you are? That's a complete lack of meekness right there. Complete lack of long-suffering. Showing that they don't have any of the peace, joy, and love either. Right? And you can find a lot of the fruit of this flesh right here if you want to read that. I've met a few priests that are drunkards. We're going to get into the murders. The fruit of the Roman Catholic Church throughout the ages here. It was like a dark age period. It started around 500 AD. Started to end around 1500 AD. About a thousand years. Darkness. It was when the, it's strange that the darkness was during the period that the Roman Catholic Church was ruling. And at its height, that's when the dark ages were. The fruit of the Spirit is this. The fruit of the Roman Catholic Church is darkness for a thousand years. Isn't that strange? It's supposed to be God's church ruling. And they had dominance for a thousand years, but it's known as the Dark Ages. Ain't that something? Well, let's look at some of the fruit. During these periods here, during this time, they took away the Bible from the people, from the common people. Not too long later, Islam was formed. Now, more on that later. But we can see during this time, Rome would burn people alive for translating the Bible, and they would burn the Bibles. That's their fruit. We see here on this one. You know, Satan's always wanted to destroy the word of God, right? All throughout history, we see the serpent with Eve, King Jehoiakim came of Israel, uh, which is interesting. I'm not. I think he might have been uh, the king during Jeremiah's time where he would actually just take the writings of Jeremiah and throw them in the fire right in front of him. That's Roman Catholic for you. I see this all throughout time where Herod, a Roman, wanted to kill Jesus right when he was born. The Word of God. And uh, we see here, Roman Catholic Church wanted to do this. And it's so strange that the Catholics will say, the Catholic Church gave us the Bible. Then why'd they want to keep it from people? Why'd they 
burn the people alive who translated it? Why did they burn the Bibles? Why are they doing that? That's really the fruit that you want to be following? That you want to be part of? Burning Bibles? That's what they would do. They would justify it by saying they're protecting the word of God from the common people. That they need to go through the Catholic Church. Right? And because they didn't go through the Catholic Church, they have all this division. Right? Well, for one, it's not a big deal to have all this division. Just like there's 12 tribes of Israel, right? There's not a big deal about the division. What the big deal about is the doctrine, the fruit. And the reason why they broke away from the Catholic Church was because of the fruit. You see, they had one church. But let's look at the fruit of the one church with this unity. I'm just going to go over a few things here. We have pictures here supposed to be of uh, indulgences. You see, the Catholic Church actually promoted sin. If you wanted to go do a sin, even if it's you know, fornication, adultery, even rape, uh, maybe even worse sins, you could go and pay money to the Catholic Church and they give you a piece of paper known as an indulgence saying that you could get away with it. So as long as you have that indulgence, you're cleared. Because you paid. It's kind of similar today. Then we got Roman law in the courts where the rich can pay a whole lot of money to get away with a whole lot of different crimes that people can see and complain about. Right? It's that same thing. That's the fruit of the Catholic Church. These are the things that got people to back away from the Catholic Church. Oh, you, you got unity, but look at his fruit. Look what it's doing. It's actually promoting, especially the rich, to pay money to be able to indulge their flesh and their sins. Is that really the fruit of the Spirit? Is that really the fruit of Jesus and his teachings? Oh, that's the fruit of actually removing Jesus and teachings, removing the Bible. Well, let's look at uh, John Huss over here and look him up. He's put to death. Uh, guess what he did? You can see here. He called the Pope infallible, not infallible. So they killed him. The Pope is not infallible. Put him to death. Do you really think that's worthy of death? Really? That's the fruit. That's the fruit of the Catholic Church. Look, this one's even crazier. John Wycliffe. What did he do wrong? Well, he translated the Bible. So what did they do to him for translating the Bible, this evil act? They burned him alive with the Bibles. But not only that, years later, they dug up his bones and burned them to ash and threw the ashes into uh, the River Swift. And they're basically just condemning him and condemning his soul to hell and all this stuff for doing the evil thing of translating the Bible, which is not... A crime whatsoever. Not at all. And, uh, yeah. That's just a little bit of it. I could get very deep into this. But you can see how the Catholics will twist these scriptures here. You know, know them by their fruit. What are they going to tell you the fruit? Oh, you need works. So you need works with your faith. But then when you judge them by their works, by their fruit, what do you get? You get bad fruit. The good tree cannot produce the bad fruit. How did Jesus live? Jobless homeless man. The world hated him. That's not how the Pope lives. How the priesthood of the Catholic Church lives. Fruit of the Spirit here. 
we don't get a lot of this from talking to Catholics. This love, joy, and peace. You don't look at them and go, wow, look at the Spirit of God in them. I need to go to Mass and take the Eucharist so I can be like those Catholics. Not at all. It's almost as if the Catholic teachings and their rituals are all BS. You know, look at the fruit, you know. No difference between the Catholics in the world. But they're the, the one true church. They have all the truth. Yet there's nothing different about them. They all suffer with these things here, the fruit of the, the flesh. And I know their arguments are going to be something like, well, the Protestants too, the Protestants too, the Protestants too, the Protestants too. And they're just going to, like a parrot, say that 152,000 times. That doesn't make it okay. It's like you go kill somebody and be like, well, Hitler killed people. Stalin killed people. Mao killed people. Jeffrey Dahmer killed people. Ted Bundy killed people. That doesn't make it okay for you to kill people. Especially since you're saying you're of God, you're God's true church, you hold up the light of the truth. And you're acting just like everybody else and then justifying acting like everybody else because of how everybody else acts. As you can see, that's twisting the fruit. And this is just a taste of their fruit. I don't know why that won't go down. Anyway. So, yeah. You can look at the fruit of uh, some of these uh, other churches and even Israel and Judaism. But that doesn't justify your own fruit. So you can, you know, deflect and distract from this all you want. It doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the fact of what's going on here. You imagine standing before God. And he says, hey, you, you said this lie to your, your dad and your mom. You, know, you lied about this and you, you lied to these people and did this. And you tell God, well, everybody else lied. They lied too. I said, oh, everybody else lied? Okay, so I'm just going to ignore what you did and not punish you now? Is that how it works? That's how silly it is. It's like they don't think clearly, which is the sign of being part of a cult. They just obey what the cult says. You can't question them. Even if the answer doesn't make sense, you go along with it because they're part of the church. They're a priest. you got to go with what they say. But uh, anyway, that is that. Thanks for watching and take care.